well. Thank you for joining me again. Um, I thought it's been a while. We should take a look at some more uh, miniatures manufacturers because uh, I've found in the last couple of years uh, a few more. Um, you'll remember a little while ago that I did a series on um, some nice metal miniature manufacturers um, who you may not have heard of, some that you will have heard of, um, and took a look at their websites. Well, I'm going to do the same thing um, for another little series of videos uh, for some more uh, miniature manufacturers. Um, so do uh, join me as we dive in there um, and hopefully they'll be of interest to you and you'll be able to spend some of your hard-earned pennies. I know things are tight at the moment but yeah, when you have some money to spend on hobbies you might consider uh, throwing some their way and giving them some endorsement. Uh, so let's take a look at the first uh, four that we're gonna we're gonna cover. Okay, so we're going to start today with our good old friends Foundry. I don't know why I didn't do Foundry the first time around. I think maybe because most people are aware of the existence of War Games Foundry. Um, um, today we're going to look at four sites that are largely historical based, um, but have a bit of fantasy or have some fantasy compatible stuff in them. Um, so which is why I'm starting with Foundry. Most people will know Foundry um, for its um, its historical um, content. Uh, you may not know Foundry uh, has quite a lot of ex Citadel pieces. So basically when Brian uh, left um, Citadel left Games Workshop to uh, to start up Foundry, he took with him uh, as part of the, the sort of severance contract um, a bunch of the more historical looking um, fantasy models from um, the Citadel ranges. And so a bunch of these are now available uh, in various places across the Foundry website, mixed in amongst some more recent sculpts but you can still find some some good old citadel classics uh, in here um, particularly among the sort of feudal ranges here there's uh, a bunch of the the old citadel fighters are, are lurking around in here um, and in addition there's some more new fantasy stuff um, that have been produced through Warmonger Fantasy Miniatures. Um, the website is not the easiest thing to navigate, but yes, here we are. So we've got some orcs and ogres and goblins and trolls and elves and halflings and all the kind of classical things that you would expect to find. Um, but these these guys, these orcs and goblins, are enormous. They're Kev Adam sculpts. And they're all sort of puff and slash uh, Renaissance figures, um, but they're all very, very big. Um, so really, um, unless they're sort of independent characters in your army, um, you would struggle to make these fit <laughs> with anything else. You really got to have uh, full regiments of the of the warmonger stuff, which is a bit difficult when they are this price. They are not the most affordable um, but there are some fun things uh, in this range they're giant trolls um, throwing hang gliding goblins and rocks uh, and various other things they also have these nice uh, revenant elves sort of decadent dark elfy vampire type characters but again you know at seven pounds each they're not they're not cheap they didn't used to be quite this expensive i'm not quite sure what it is that has driven the prices up here um, but I guess they've got to make it worth their while but yeah they're they're certainly not the most affordable um, of the of the ranges but they are very nice um, and every time I'm up there for bring out your lead um, and various other uh, events throughout the year I try and pick something up to support them because they're very good and they put they host bring out your lead for free um, they don't charge the community for for using their buildings. Um, so yeah, it's nice to nice to kind of give something back. So here's just a just a quick flick through of some of the various things that you can find fantasy wise for fun in the 
uh, in the foundry ranges. But you can really look through here all day. And of course, all of their medieval stuff, a lot of that is peri sculpts. Um, so that's very compatible with um, with older citadel armies as well. Okay, so there is our warmonger um, and foundry. At the moment, uh, you can probably see up here the Christmas sale is on. I'm looking at this um, in December. I don't know how long that runs. Um, that's basically 10% uh, off orders of £100 um, up to 25% off orders of, I think, about £400. So if you're going to order a lot, <laughs> it's worth it if you're buying whole armies. Um, but it's maybe not so useful if you're um, if you're buying in small quantities, the odd figure. Anyway, so that is uh, Foundry and Warmonger. Um, oh, and they also do, I should probably, if I z try and zoom back uh, to Foundry, um, there's also the Casting Room Miniatures. Um, where are they hiding? As I say, this website is not the easiest to navigate. Somewhere down the bottom here, casting room miniatures. Um, this has a selection of not current foundry figures. Um, so if you're looking for something and you know foundry used to sell it and you can't find it anymore, have a hunt in casting room because I think that this is just stock that they've got. And when they uh, they don't necessarily keep these in stock, but they may have some. Uh, leftover bits and pieces. Cool. Right, let's move on now to artisan designs. And I've left the bar up top here, so hopefully you can see the um, the title bar. That will give you the website if you want to go to it. Artisan again. This is a company that is. Um, quite extensive this is featured on um north star which is why um uh which is why that link is there so you can go through the north star page to find these um and again a lot of these are um a lot of these are historical things you've got some arthurian dark age stuff which might be useful if you're looking for woodsy things um but a lot of this stuff is sort of medieval and fantasy medieval do like their pirates though i might have to get some of those to add to my to my own pirates and they've got lanish necks so if your um chosen historical figures are lanish necks and i actually i painted some of these up i didn't know this is what they were but i i found acquired some of these and painted some of these up last year um as just general uh barroom civilians put sort of tankards in their hands and things and they worked really nicely as sort of uh, off duty imperial soldiers uh, just hanging out in the town um and some of these are quite useful as well as if you've got um Estalian, uh soldiers or um Tyrolean soldiers in your armies these could be useful um but then there's a bunch of stuff that's fun but probably not so useful to a fantasy collector but here they have their um their borderlands range of fantasy stuff and this is very uh very tasty you may have seen these i think i dwelled on these a little bit uh when i was doing the more the north star coverage um but there's some very kind of labyrinthy goblins lurking in amongst here um so it's just a nice reminder that this thing uh, exists this uh this little category exists worth having a look through so a small selection but a selection nonetheless um and of course they've got the um the historical figures that are definitely usable uh, in a fantasy context. Okay, moving on. Here we have Crusader miniatures. And Crusader miniatures, you might notice again, their North Star linked. This website design is very, very similar. So definitely the same stable. And again, you can get to these through North Star. Um, I 
mention these mainly because uh, I'm planning on using these, um, the Hundred Years War uh, medieval feudal types for my Bretonian forces when I uh, get around to building up my Bretonian warband. Um, I picked up some of these uh, soldiers and they're really nice um, and so I'm, I'm planning to use those uh, as as most of my mounted troops and my uh, archers I think are going to come from here. Um, they do of course also do some slightly later soldiers so these Teutonic Knights are quite nice. Might have some of those in the army. Um, and these Wars of the Roses figures fit in really nicely with uh, a sort of classic uh, old school Bretonian look. So at four for £11.50, I'm going to do some quick mental maths in my head. That's just under £3 a figure, so that's not that's not too bad pretty much on par although of course historicals tend to be uh, a bit cheaper um in any case than the fantasy stuff but um yeah that's that's not a bad not a bad price at all um and the mounted troops you get three random selection of three for 1150 so that's you can't really complain cavalry troops at that price that's very good um and you've got lots of other things in here. So there's some Dark Age bits and pieces. Again, if you were building a, a Tuatha warband for the woods, these guys might be of interest to you. One of the reasons that I don't do uh, my own Tuatha figures through Oakbound because there are plenty of um, Dark Age historical uh, figures available. Very nice ones, and these are some of my favourite. Um, but there is also a fantasy selection here so we've got some beastmen we've got some dwarfy types these are less cartoony fat dwarves and more in proportion but short dwarves which are nice but again if they're not necessarily going to fit with other ranges so you might want to build up an entire range of these guys but three for seven pounds that's two pounds, two pounds thirty-three ish. Um, a model that's quite easily doable, isn't it? Quite easy. I know there's not that many um, poses, but if you wanted some big monopose units, you could do that quite well. There's some adventurer types for more sort of role play stuff. Their goblins are more sort of. Um, citadel lord of the rings type goblin than a citadel warhammer type goblin but again good prices there and we've got half orcs which again look quite lord of the rings thuggish i'm thinking of the the peter jackson lord of the rings not what i have in my head as lord of the rings but the citadel lord of the rings type uh, figures and these guys are a bit barbarian -y, so I've got some of these in my um, in my barbarian horde and then the ogres which are nice chunky chaps there so there we have crusader miniatures uh, and we're going to look at one more today we're going to have a look at Eureka Miniatures, uh, and this is a company that I um, have recently acquired some figures from. Um, again, there's there's so much stuff here, and most of this in you know in different scales. This is all um, there's a bit of science fiction, but this is mostly historical. But in the 28 millimeter range, um, there are some strange things in amongst here. The uh, the Chaos Army here. This is my favourite. As I've just picked up some of these figures. Um, these are kind of medieval marginalia or um, Hieronymus Bosch type figures. Um, 
and I'm going to use them for my Carnival of Chaos. I picked up some of my favourite from here, but they're lovely weirdo mutant uh, beasties. And look at this guy with his giant nose that this guy's propping up. Um, and there's where Death Rides a Snail. Is he at the top of this one? Yes. Death Rides a Pale Snail is one of my favourites. So, yeah, very weird and wonderful things very actually chaotic rather than just being horned knights um so like those I'm, I'm hoping to build up a decent um decent chaos uh carnival uh, out of those um there are a nice lot of medieval figures in here so not just um your characters but also some townsfolky type people Nice assortment of musicians in here. Um, and then your rank and file. £2.40 per figure. Variants supplied randomly, so you can't choose. But if you're going to build up a big unit, I'd imagine you'd get most of those figures. Um, and they've got this nice um, Sale helmet. So they're not too far away from... Um, Empire soldiers, you might just have to put some plumes on them. Uh, find somebody who sells separate plastic plumes or something and put them on there. But you've got these nice, nice archers again, fitting for a Bretonian warband or for uh, for an Empire force. I wouldn't wouldn't feel bad painting those and putting them in my Empire army. In fact, I might do so uh, at some point in the not too distant future. Um, and there's some benches and tables and people to sit at them and various food and bits and pieces in there as well and this lovely dog getting a tidbit from the boy that's really nice um yeah so there we go there's some medieval stuff and what else have we got down in here um in their actual fantasy section their miscellaneous fantasy We've got some adventurer types, some Amazons, slightly more uh, classical Grecian Amazons uh, than you might think of, chaos Egyptians, why not? Oh look, they're undead, yes, so not tomb kings here. Um, Corpse and Musket. So should you be playing Silver Bayonet or um, Flintlock? Here are some perhaps nicer figures than your standard. Um, uh, when I say standard, you know which range I'm talking about. Napoleonic fantasy stuff. Um, cultists. Hooded, chaotic and uh, Egyptian type cultists. The Fantaside series is, as you can see, sort of fawns and satyrs and horned creatures. My, what a big spear you have, Mr. Horned Canonus type god. More people on on snails. Brownies riding snails. If there's 10 millimeters, that suggests that that means that they are um, very small figures. Uh, you can get six of those. I guess they're all the same, but a set of six. 1095 sprites brownies riding squirrels little creeps and big creeps so yeah these are quite good if you want a fey warband for your woods um army here's a good source of those um we've got movie monsters more sort of pulp horror bits and pieces myths more kind of classical a bit of crossover here we've seen some of these in other places but um if you want your classical grecian stuff all in one place that's in there skeletons again we'll have seen some of these but there's some extra um less egyptian skeletons in here including some skeleton pirates which again might have to pick up some skeleton pirates they'll be nice encounters for my uh for my piratical warband to go up against um warriors and mice not quite Skaven, but if you wanted to go in a more cutesy direction, maybe more useful for Mice and Mystics or for Burrows and Badgers. Um, 
and then winged fezzed monkeys because why not why not winged fezzed monkeys if you're doing a wizard of oz um type scenario that might be useful uh, and then yeah, it's other lots of other things in here some of which may be you know samurai and pirates may be um, compatible with fantasy forces others less so so there we go there's our four um four spotlight on miniature manufacturers for this week join me uh next week in the meantime have a safe one take care and i'll see you again